Hey guys, Dasgro here. I'm joined with Sir Slicey from Global Conflict. That's because we are doing a 32 versus 32 like Global Conflict multi POV commentary. A lot of different perspectives here. We have quite a few. We have Jokery. Nice. We have a bunch of other ones. We're seeing Jokery right now, uh, or Joker. Right. That's a lot easier to say. And uh, but while we're waiting for all these to get going, I want to introduce Sir Slicey. Sir Slicey, thanks for joining me. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing real well. And we have some really cool POVs here. We have yeah, uh, not just the regular four that we have. But we actually have six, six POVs. I want to talk about. Uh, we have Joker. We have Gwinzer, who is actually the commander for a uh, team Legion of Doom. That's really cool. We have. Uh, who else we have? We got Mr. Blue. Who already kills one, kills JD, but he goes down himself. Uh, Mr. Blue from Team Kid Image Rainbow Time. We have Expandos from Kid Image Rainbow Time. We have, uh, what else we got? We got Necromancer. From Kitchen Adventure. I'm rushing down. So sorry, bro. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then we got Danimal. Danimal on Legion of Doom. Now, Sir Slassy, what team are you on? I personally am on cart. Okay, no, on cart or kitchen, down. kitten so adventure rainbow time. That's not the first yeah. time I've called it kitchen. Bravo, this is hard to out. say, I guess. <laughs> uh, and then we also got a few other POVs as well. We got the we got the Danimal Expandus uh, POV. Now, why do I have this? You see Danimal in the plane, Expandus fight it out, uh, gets killed by Moe and the havoc. This is because Expand is also one of the uh, jet guys, and he will be going against Danimal quite often. Then we also have the quad cam as well with uh, Joker, Danimal, Mr. Blue 9, and Expandus. So uh, a lot of things are going on right here. So uh, what's the backstory here, Sir Slicey? Uh, Albor's Mountain. Is this, is this a tough map or is this an easy map? You know, I think, personally, I think it's a tough map. Um, it seems like uh, on cart we've always had uh, bad luck with the map. Now, for this match, personally, I don't think I was here. So I can't tell you, you know, how it went. But um, I guess we can watch. Yeah, I, I, was, not for th I was not here for this one either. But uh, it, 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 this seemed like a really intense match. We just saw uh, Expandus try to take out Danimal. Danimal oh. takes him out with the helicopter. The squad bum uh, me and we have a lot of people down right now. I'm going to go to the quad cam up, but just the entire squad. Uh, real quick, quickly just to see what's going on. Everyone's dead except for Danimal. Now, generally speaking, Sir Slicey, I mean, how much importance do you put on in taking the enemy helicopter out? Well, you know, when they're, when they're causing a lot of trouble, I try to get, uh, personally, I'm a squad leader, so I try to get, you know, one of the squad members to uh, pull out a stinger, or even I'll do it myself. Uh, once the uh, helicopters start to, you know, bug out, and then, you know, it's not really a big deal, but uh, they can definitely wreak havoc. Now, what makes Global Conflict different in terms of in terms of doing squad orders like putting a stinger out? Because some people will say, well, stinger kind of sucks against a helicopter. Why would you go for it? What makes Global Conflict different? Well, see that. like, what do you mean exactly? Well, I, I mean, I, this is more of, more of a leading question, but one thing that I've noticed about Global Conflict is that when you have a few guys that go stinger, place, you actually have a, Brian. no kidding, a few guys that actually do go stinger, and you have three or four guys that are all running it, and you can actually you have a decent guys? chance of taking out the enemy helicopter, well, because it's not just you as a lone yeah, dude all, they're, getting they're a stinger. Sure. Uh, right, well, not just that, but you can also, uh, with four stingers, you know, it keeps the helicopter away because the they know that, uh, that they're definitely being locked on. And on top of that, they also have to worry about uh, enemy aircraft, too, so. Indeed, indeed. Going to, uh, let's go to uh, Expandus. Expandus uh, in the jet, flying around. I really enjoy... Yes. Oh, go ahead. That's interesting. Uh, Expandus is actually our general now for current. He is. Field step down. Let's go. And he is going for that AC or that AC-130 kill. Takes some damage, but that's all right. Going for those strafing runs. And I want to show something really cool, because you don't see this this often. Uh, we have Gwinzer Cam. Gwinzer is actually the commander for Legion of Doom. He's uh, he's just he's in the MAV just spotting Enemy things out. That's all he's doing. Two TDs. It's uh, actually sort of... Uh, it's kind of overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't there. Have you ever done commander, uh, this kind of commander I'm doing thing? Just take both on alpha. Yes, I have. I, uh, the beginning of C4 on Gladius, I ran the uh, Nabos for a little bit, and uh, it was, you know, it's not something for everybody, but um, TV's firing you know, I, on me. I guess uh, it can be kind of. Um, 
It can be hectic. They help, they help I can't see what they Especially if you're losing. You don't, uh, you don't necessarily know what's going wrong, you know, especially when your squad leaders aren't talking to you. It really does rely a lot on, on the comms, then. It's not just having a, an eye in the sky, right? Right, you need to have a lot of input from your squads. And uh, you're a squad leader now, or, or a captain for uh, Team uh, Cart. Uh, right, I'm a uh, first lieutenant. And, and in this, this is, this is, what, this is not your Not's first campaign, done. clearly. How many campaigns have you done thus far? I have been with GC since uh, Campaign 3 with uh, Dark Army, and I was in Gladius with C4. And, and when you were on, uh, on Campaign 3, did you just, just join at random? What got you into uh, Global Conflict in the first place? What actually got me into Global Conflict was Gwinzer. I've known Gwinzer for a while, and we were in a uh, clan together called Black Intel. He, uh... I think he just messaged me up and he said, hey, this is uh, Global Conflict, check it out, you know, sign up, there's a new campaign starting soon. Uh, I think you'd like it. You know, I, just, I showed up the first uh, battle day, and I thought it was awesome, so, you know, I've been here since. What, what did you expect the first battle day? I mean, did, was it, there, was it, was it, did you have different expectations of what actually happened? Uh, you know, I really didn't know what to expect. Was I thought it was, uh, really interesting. It was a completely new experience. I've never been in any kind of competitive gaming before, so, uh, you know, this was definitely a taste of that. And, and, and by the, the second campaign that you worked on, were you, were you, did you get to the point where you were squad leading by then, or did you start squad leading midway through the first, uh, campaign that you started working in? Uh, I actually started squad leading in, uh, C3. I, um... We needed squad leaders, and uh, so Gwinzer actually himself taught me how so to squad lead. I'm squad leading since I was also an officer in Gladius too. Now squad leading it, it, yeah, it requires not just being able to be a good player, but it requires uh, taking orders from really both ends. One, you are listening to orders that are coming from above, but you also have to give orders down down way as well as take information that your squad may be telling you and bring it upward as well. Uh, how long did it take you to really kind of get the feel for that? The artillery was blown up. Well, you know, at that first it was kind of difficult. Yeah. I thought it was a lot of fun, but at the same time it was kind of intimidating because you got, you know, tons of people yelling on Channel down Commander. Down. You're not sure uh, the artillery necessarily was who's up. talking, especially since I was new. Didn't really know all the voices and everything. Um, but uh, eventually you do get used to it. And uh, you just have to keep a level head. You just got to be calm. And uh, your members... Input is able, definitely important, but uh, you know I've had times no. where it's like, okay, we'll belay that order. We're just gonna do this I instead, you know, because I'm. In the end, we're here on the ground, and uh, you know, it's oh. it's my decision to uh, on, find we're, out what's we're best. We're Indeed, uh, unfortunately, Expandus goes into a tree. He goes down. Uh, oh no! Uh, but one of the things that I really like about uh, about uh, actually, oh, Danimal went down too. Uh, oh no! One of the things that I like about about global conflict, though, is that uh, you you the jets can't camp each other. There's, we have a rule that jets can't camp each other. And so even if if one of the jets sort of has a bad day and goes down, he still has a chance to get up there. How how is that how is that different in playing compared to like on a pub? Well, on a pub, um, you know, you can. Uh, Don't it's really easy to be uh, you know uh, spawn camped in your deployment. Uh, it's GC has these fair play rules to uh, try to keep things just fun. You know, it's not about uh, it's not about winning. You know, it's just about having fun. It's that's the goal of everybody here. In, in that respect, I mean, how, what is the retention like? I mean, do you see a lot of people jo join these campaigns and leaving, or do they stick around for a while? Uh, well, depends. I mean, it seems like of the people who do stick around, oh, they tend to stick like around for a while. You know, um, he just disappeared. But then there's also a lot of people who uh, we sign lost one, up, but just, they just never show up. That makes sense. That makes sense. And uh, when you actually play these campaigns, did these big right, battle orders, days, we are going to go Saturdays, attack Charlie with a PD. So long hop time. In a How many hours I mean, when you first started playing did you actually put into this? Uh, I actually put in 100%. I, wow. I don't think I missed a single battle day in C3. I think I was there from pretty much the beginning. I think I maybe missed like an hour of one battle day. That was pretty much it. That's some, that's some commitment. Uh, and, but but that's not you know, not everyone has to do that. That was right? a mine. That was another mine. No, I didn't think it's uh, 
optional. You, if you can only show up like an hour every battle day, then no, it's no big deal. You have to have the you. campaign. Nobody, it's not, uh, you don't get kicked, you know, it's open to everybody. Oh, yes. And Expand is going for another yeah, Stinger hit. Gets a Stinger hit, no, takes out uh, the enemy Joe with the dis Disable. Good stuff. I do you like seeing those stingers hit, even though oh, that it's a rarity. Yeah, so you know, there no are out the stingers being useful. Like I was like saying, I squad with me and oh, expand is looking to the sun and gets a shot out there. Hopefully, he gets something. We'll see. Oh, I don't know about that. He's about to hit Gwinzer's Mav, too. Oh, no. Well, let's go to the Gwinzer cam and see if what happens. Oh, no. I mean, let's keep on that. going. Now, score right now. Let's go to the squad. I'm going to Mr. Blue. Mr. Blue is, uh, what's the score right now? 220 to 229. I'm barely, now I'm 280 something. I'm barely able to read that. Looks like right. US is at 218 and Russians are at 290. Yes, that's right. Uh, and so at this point, L LOD is up by nearly 60 tickets. Nearly 60 tickets. Okay, what does it look like on the Bravo? You see anything? Going to Joker, Joker uh, still defending that, that Bravo there. point. Bravo. What, what are the most important points on Arbor's Mountains to hold? Uh, I would say definitely the uh, most central points. Like way probably the back points back. that are actually on top of the mountain. Uh, so we're looking at Joker's yeah, cam. I would say definitely the flag he's at, and probably, uh, From the I don't head. remember which flag it is, but the flag with the AC-130 that he was just looking at as well. Yes. Uh, Danimal actually... Suicides, but he kills one guy in the process. That's kind of good. Uh, going to Mr. Blue. He's sort of making this big trek up the hilltop, or at least around the hilltop, with his entire squad, no less. Now, in this, uh, I mean, yeah, how, how successful are these sort of up-the-hill pushes? And, uh, well, in my experience, not very successful. I mean, uh, if, if it is a successful push, then either nobody's there, or you've been fighting at that flag for like a good ten minutes. Hmm. And so it, it could be good if if there's really no one there, but that really is more about your commander telling you where they are, that kind of thing, right? Right, yeah, and uh, what also really helps is uh, spawn beacons, too. Those are invaluable when it comes to these kind of assaults. Yes, because unlike uh, regular pub play, Global Conflict is spawn on squad leader only. It's very much sort of a combination of regular uh, game mode settings and hardcore settings in the sense that you, you do a spawn on squad leader only, no. and that's a bit different compared to what people are used to. Yeah, two jets on. Okay, go look. How, how is that different for you to like start playing with uh, versus your previous experience in playing pubs? Or did you play mostly hardcore in pubs? Uh, you know, I think... I mostly played uh, just standard, um, but it didn't really seem like that big of a difference. In fact, I don't even know if I actually noticed the uh, Thanks, Blue. the difference in, like, say, health. Like, I think the health is at eighty percent in mm. GC. Yes. Yeah. I've, you know, so I've it's kind of a compromise between hardcore and normal. Uh, but uh, it just, I don't know, felt comfortable. And as you've played these campaigns, have you noticed Watch your your own personal Watch skill yourself. go up? At least when you, I mean, our pubs just not as fun to play anymore. It's too easy. What's your experience Thanks. been in that respect? Well, I I did feel like that uh, my own personal skill it expanded quite a bit, especially knowledge with uh, many things, you know. I've uh, been playing with a lot of people from GC in pubs, and uh, that's right, they want mostly where the funds to be had, I think. Uh, you know, I show up during the battle days and I have lots of fun, but, you know, what's to say I can't uh, keep playing with them, you know? I pub with them all the time. And that sort of thing is that yeah, you can you can broken. play with these people. It's not just a right. super organized event where you can't play with anyone else. <laughs> yep. Anyone can come and go, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So it's like Windsor's map's down. Oh, no. It is down. Going to uh, the Windsor camp. He's sort of just waiting for it to get reloaded. Here it comes. He's putting it back up. The score right now, 238 to 132. Who's expand is gonna take out that heli? Is he? Let's go check it out. Let's see, down oh. out. Still getting locked on. Is that gonna be enough? Oh Looks no! Looks like he hit a tree. Oh! Yeah, he's down. Yeah, he's down. Nice, nice job, expand this. Take him out, guys. Stinger can work if you got yeah, enough of them. It's all about timing. You get the ACM timed up, and you can actually do a lot of damage. 
You know, it seems like I've had a uh, more luck when they're using uh, infrared flares versus ECM. ECM seems to reload pretty quickly. Hmm. Normally, when they're using ECM, it seems like you got to use uh, multiple stingers. No, I like this position that Mr. Blue's at. He's he's there with a few of his squad mates. He's holding the. I, I believe this is the the point that gets the uh, C one thirty AC one. No, actually, it's not the one that's AC one thirty. But the back, he's it? sort of. They're sort of all on this mountain top, yeah, and just they're holding these really uh, bunkered in positions. I really like that. Yeah, but he's just going for the revives right now. Oh yeah, is that mortar? Is he is he getting mortared? It looks like it. Maybe. I think so. Maybe going to Danimal. Danimal. Um, Maybe perhaps going for some hits with Loa. He's shooting something. He's getting some. Uh, some. He's getting some hit indicators. I don't know. He's getting something, but he's leaving. Hit. He's launching his TV. I'm not sure what he's shooting at. No. No. Looks like he was shot down by decoy. He was going to expand us. Expand us in the. Uh, Enemy jet. In the in the jet. I thought it very interesting that a lot that a lot of these pilots, Expandus and Danimal, both instead of pushing the M button to uh, make their map bigger, they simply push the escape button. Expandus going in for that uh, kill on uh, enemy jet. He gets a lot of hits on it. He's getting real close. Uh oh, he got to disable. That may be enough. Looks like he bailed. Don't go too high. Yeah. Guy bailed. Doing good. Doing real good. He's able to, to stay up. Yeah. Still seeing the game right now. It's 183 to 119. Uh, but expand, but uh, but Kitten Adventure Rainbow Time has gotten the bleed on Legion of Doom. Okay, good. And take in mind, guys, that Expandus and and, and Kid Adventure Rainbow Time. Ooh, get another kill. Kills Snoop. Uh, Snoop. 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 I was gonna say something different. Uh, and uh, now that he's got an air dominance, I'm guessing he'll go after that uh, that uh, that that mobile uh <laughs> squad on alpha by the way go for that ac-130 that's my guess okay, yes yeah, so looks like danimal's in the uh ac-130 right yeah, now i think his ac-130 oh. just got hit with a tv he did looks he like he's jumps bailing. out oh. he bails over delta oh yeah and, but gets out his uh his grail or his man pad because taken out by decoy uh going to other povs mr blue is on delta as well he knows Expandus is that Dan Mall was up there, and it's getting closer to even, guys. It's getting. Yeah, it looks like a uh, cart could be pulled. Got him back. and Delta now, right under the dish. This is really good work, guys. Really good work. Seems he find Duke. There's a difference of 40 tickets. Yes. Look at looking at Joker. Joker, uh, 143 to 107. Oh, uh, the Legion of Doom is still winning, but. They, they're losing, losing the bleed here. Now, getting the bleed's important, but how important is, is attrition in all this? Uh, well, attrition comes into uh, it comes into play. It depends on when, or it depends on which army's attacking. If 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 an army's attacking, then that means uh, then that means that the, the defending army yeah. wants to basically defend for as long as possible to keep them from attacking other Spawn territories. So they don't want to outright win the match necessarily. They want to keep it, you know, going as long as possible. Yeah, so they may only take two to four flags to keep the bleed, you know, as uh, stable as possible. I suppose. Yeah, I now, what you're talking about is the meta game of global conflict. Let's talk, give a little bit of context to what the, what we're talking about here. So global conflict has is it is it is it four quarters or is it just is it just a, a time period of so many hours? Okay, everybody spawn back on Delta now. Delta. Well, I think the battle goes for about six hours or so. Yes. So it just yeah, kind of like depends, Delta. you know. Because the the idea is that just like the game board game Risk, you have your turn where you attack and you have the opponent's like turn where you basically get to defend. With a six hour allotment, you you get to attack. So many territories, as long as you won for that six hours. But once the six hours gets done, you can't attack anymore. Oh, shit, and so if, spawn. in theory, you oh, were to play lame. a bunch of maps, and you were able to uh, win really That's quickly, like like ten minute rounds, and, and, and win ten rounds over the course of six hours, you've killed ten, ar ten armies and conceivably taken a bunch of territories. But if the defending team stalls it, tries to play through attrition instead, they can actually delay these rounds so that each round may be 30 or 40 minutes in length, and then you may only be able to attack five or six armies the oh, entire six hours. That's what you're talking about, right? Absolutely, yeah. A lot of destruction going to Gwinzer. It's so, it's so silent up here. It's almost like being sort of a U2 spy plane, just looking and seeing where the action is, but not able to help. 
Just, yep. just talking it out. Now, at this point, Legion of Doom is taking a fourth Can someone point. tell Spreeze to lay It's 96 to 51 down. in their favor. I'm needing you to move by. Still trying to so this, this is interesting. Spandis is actually on the ground now instead of in a jet. Looks like they're uh, really yeah. fighting to take that third flag. Is it, is it really just about putting as many bodies as you can on that third flag because it believes it's too just much? Just rush him. We outnumber him now. Just put yeah. both TDs. Dead. We outnumber your guys. So they've got uh, <laughs> Scott has. 40 tickets left, so basically uh, they're going to lose the match if they don't take a third flag. Yes, going to Danimal. Danimal is uh, getting a lot of altitude. It seems as if the LOD has air superiority now, or at least has some, or trying to. They have one of their, their jets up in the air going to There's Joker. Joker sees too. guys defending it up. It's 80 to 39. Okay, I'll swing on the left side. I don't know where right this is going to go. Holy shit. Bravo. We need help on Bravo. But we, I don't know. I think yep. I think Joker's been pretty much pushed up in that uh, mountain for a while now. Oh yeah. They seem to be successfully defending the flag. I don't know if uh, Car's gonna be able to take it. Going to Mr. Blue. Mr. Blue uh, sees a bunch of guys on Hilltop. His buddies are pushing up on the far right side. He's trying to help him out, provide some support. I really like this position because his two buddies are pushing up right right to the flag point, whereas he's providing covering fire for him, almost a flanking fire. I really like that. And Expandus is, is there as well, also pushing up. On a Bravo. Play defensive now. It looks like they're taking it. They are taking it. 15 to 70. Six guys he is not lost yet. It's Spanish six out They could turn this around. It's 15 to 75, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're doing pretty well for you themselves. Can, you can hear Gwinzer kind of uh, panicking a little bit. Oh, no. Gwinzer doesn't. Let's go to Gwinzer cam. Check out what he's doing. He says, guys, we're losing it. Now, having done now three campaigns, are there different styles of sort of commanders in terms of uh, in terms of how you know how they can handle the pressure? Good work. Good work. Uh, yeah, I would say so. I, I think that uh, you know, obviously, uh, F sing is not for everybody, but um, some people are more stable under pressure than others are. I love it. Nice work. Um, I don't know. It's uh, I've noticed a difference like between each campaign as well. This campaign seems to be very uh, relaxed and laid back. You know, so uh, we're you know we're just trying to keep it cool because the last campaign was uh, pretty intense and it kind of burnt a lot of us out. Uh, that could happen. It's forty-seven to seven right now, but Kid of the Time, who is, who only has seven tickets remaining, they have the bleed. And Danimal is in the C-130 trying to get some kills, but he goes down by fields of kittens. Or Fields, who is the uh, the general, supreme commander of the uh, of Kid Adventure Rainbow Time, Mr. Blue trying to hold the point. Oh, but he gets grenaded at the last moment. Joker Five taking zone Alpha. Zone Once they take the Alpha, the this may be the end of it. But well, uh oh, it looks like there's a LAV maybe pushing his way. Right from the flag it looks like they took it back. It. They're uh, the yeah, they're gonna it. lose. It. This may be the end, guys. It may, Six tickets left. It may they're be also the losing uh, Bravo Chopper. as well. Pretty soon they're gonna be stuck with one flag. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. And nice. that's the end of the cool. round, guys. End of the round. Final score. That's a tough round. Final score mm -hmm. uh, is yes, no, no. what was it? Thirty to zero. So let's go into some analysis. All right, guys. That's the end of the round of. Team Legion of Doom versus Kitten Adventure Rainbow Time. Legion of Doom barely squeaks out the win with less than 40 tickets. That was sub match. Uh, and it's, it's kind of hard to really uh, get an idea of what's all going on with all these different perspectives and things like that for these larger game types. But uh, one of the few things that I noticed was that both teams spent a lot of resources holding uh, Delta and holding Echo. Uh, and, and also holding to a lesser extent uh, uh, Bravo and Foxtrot. These were kind of the points that they fought on. And when uh, when Legion of Doom was able to hold Echo, they were using the EC-130 a whole lot. Uh, but it, it didn't seem like it was it was up that much because the uh, it seemed that, that the that the uh, Kid Adventure Rainbow Times Jets were always taking it out. Uh, Slicey, did you have any observations about what happened? Uh, it was definitely an intense fight. Um, looks like uh, Cart was constantly uh, pushing on Bravo, but 
never really successful up until the end in which they actually lost it again right before the match ended. Yes, both Charlie um, and Bravo were were I mean were being contested. Yeah, and uh, also looked like Danimal and Loa were doing great work in the helicopter and only taken down I think a few times. Yes, but they get taken down by Expanda's uh, Stinger. That was really cool to see. I liked that one. But anyway, uh, so these were kind of these close matches that really can go either way. I mean, we saw the uh, that Alicia Doom held it for majority of the time. But Kid Vitra Ambler time really turned it around in the last few minutes. If they only had maybe another 15, 20 tickets, they may have been able to, want, to win that entire thing. I think it's very reasonable to, to, to hypothesize that, indeed. Yeah, it was definitely a tough fight, and I think that Cart definitely had the uh, potential to win that. And w when these kinds of, of matches happen, these kind of close games, you end up playing the same round on the same side again a few more times if you got more armies on that given piece of territory. Generally speaking, do, do, do does each team sort of change up their strategies or just keep on trying the same thing? I mean, what what have you seen historically uh, teams do in this kind of situation? Uh, from what I've seen, it's mostly uh, just trial and error. You know, if it if it works, uh, don't fix it. Hmm. Um, if it's not working, then uh, you know, obviously something needs to be changed. Indeed, indeed. So, guys, remember, anyone can jo join up and play global conflict it's really easy you go to the website in the links below it's global-conflict.org you sign up you show up it's pc only you can be in north america you can be in south america you can be in europe you can be in asia as long as you show up at the uh, the time which is around what it's like uh 20 cet or standard battle time which which is sort of what like 1 or 2 p.m eastern something like that just show it's uh 10, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. There you go. That's another way to put it. 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, show up. It's really easy, guys. And it's a lot of fun. And you get these really intense battles. It, you, you, we saw the AC-130 here. We saw people using stingers and actually being effective with them. We saw really the combined arms of Battlefield being used here. And so uh, why, why not? Why not sign up? I really encourage all of you to do so. And, uh, and remember, I play too, and, and maybe you can play with Sir Slicey even. Um, so any closing thoughts, Sir Slicey, before we uh, wrap this one up? Uh, I'd just like to say that Global Conflict is definitely the way that uh, Battlefield was meant to be played, you know, with this uh, higher level of teamwork. You know, I have a lot of fun. Yes, it is a lot of fun. And I'll tell you from personal experience that I rarely pub anymore, in part because of Global Conflict. It's that much fun. It's, it's that game-changing in terms of... Of, of your perspective of how you play the game. Yeah, it changes your entire perspective. Indeed. So I want to thank all of you for watching. Check out Global Conflict, links below. So Slicey, do you have any social media things that you want to plug while we're here, or are you good to go? Uh, yeah, sure. I have a uh, YouTube account, and I also have a Twitch account. Yeah, and uh, you'll be able to find those links below as well. And so uh, subscribe, sign up, follow do what you do guys so uh, again thanks everyone for watching and thank you sir sir slicey for uh helping me with this and uh and whenever you want to come back and do another one please let me know no problem i'd love to all right well all of you have a good one i'll see you guys later